In the morning, after feeding his guard dogs, the owner of a junkyard is getting ready to start another day's work when suddenly a truck parked in the yard comes to life and attacks him. After starting the engine by itself, the vehicle speeds towards the store and runs over Phil, who was distracted inside. The truck then runs out of the junkyard and parks on the side of the road, as if waiting for someone. That afternoon, after saying goodbye to Ray and his son, Logan, Hope informs them that she is going to pick up a group of tourists in Brighton. The woman is one of the employees of the gas station in the middle of the road between Brighton and Lunar. In addition to the gas station, Ray also owns a snack bar and a hostel. His employee, Hope, is responsible for guiding tourists who arrive to go hiking on the outskirts of town. After saying goodbye to George, the diner's cook, the woman takes her van and hits the road on her way to the next town. However, during the journey, she ends up being caught by the ghost truck. On arriving in Brighton, Hope meets Abby and her father, Thad, two backpackers who are accompanied by Jack, a man with a passion for alien stories. While Hope receives the clients who have hired her as a tour guide, John is driving when he suddenly loses control of his truck. Desperate, the man tries to apply the brakes, but they don't work and the vehicle continues to roll down the road. Minutes later, when he finally manages to stop the truck, John looks around to try to find out what happened, but he hears a noise coming from the trunk and decides to check if there is anyone hiding in there. However, as soon as the man enters the refrigerated trunk, the door closes and he is locked inside. On the way back to her city, Hope tells them that Lunar was founded exactly where a meteor fell thousands of years ago. After a few minutes on the road, Hope spots John's truck and wonders why it has stopped in the middle of the road, but decides to drive straight on without stopping to find out what happened. After driving for a few more kilometers, the woman comes across the same truck that was parked on the roadside that morning and decides to stop to see if the driver is in need of help. Realizing that the vehicle is obstructing the road, Thad tries to push it back onto the shoulder and Jack takes the opportunity to take some photos. While the group is distracted posing for the camera, John's truck appears and hits the other vehicle. At that moment, Hope and the tourists are almost hit, but luckily they manage to get out of the accident unharmed. As the truck invades the junkyard, Hope decides to call the town sheriff, but is interrupted when the vehicle returns to destroy her van. That afternoon, June and her husband, Brad, arrive at the inn and are met by Ray and Logan. The pair claim that Hope has gone to the neighboring town to pick up the other guests who will be taking part in the moon walk and accompanies the newly married couple to their room. At this point, Hope manages to get in touch with the inn where she works and, when she finds out that her employee has suffered an accident, Ray immediately goes to find her. Meanwhile, Jack and Thad try to figure out how that truck was moving if there was no one driving and come to the conclusion that the driver must have had his head down. Just then, Ray is on his way to the site and, in the middle of the road, he comes across the ghost truck. However, just as he was about to be run over by the vehicle, he manages to swerve and continues on his way until he finds hope. A few minutes later, another unmanned truck appears on the road and the driver is unable to avoid crashing into a lunar power plant. After the explosion, George's diner is without electricity and the old man asks Logan to go and turn on the generators. Seeing the large amount of smoke in the air, Ray decides to call his son to check that everything is all right, but the young man can't hear his voice. After breakfast, June and Brad go to their room and take advantage of the fact that the whole city is dark to start their honeymoon. Suddenly, the ghost truck appears and starts driving around the cafeteria parking lot. When he finally finds the tourists stranded on the road, Ray asks where Hope is and Jack informs him that she has gone to the junkyard to see if Phil is all right. But when she gets there, the woman finds the old man eliminated and realizes that he had been run over that morning. Immediately, Ray goes after his friend and Abby despairs at the sight of a deceased man on the ground. Terrified, the young woman says she wants to go home, but her father manages to convince her to continue the journey. Worried about his son, Ray quickly gets back into his car and drives back to the diner at high speed, believing there is an evil man on the loose. Meanwhile, one of the diner's customers starts to get annoyed by the ghost truck driving around the parking lot and decides to leave. However, as he walks through the courtyard in an attempt to get to his vehicle, he is almost run over and runs back into the establishment. Frightened, Pete reports that he didn't see any drivers inside the truck and everyone starts to wonder what's going on. At that moment, Bob decides to leave and tries to get to his truck to get his rifle in order to shoot the tires, but he also has to run back to the diner. With the help of the generator, George manages to turn on the TV and discovers that several towns in the region are without electricity due to the explosion. According to the sheriff, it will take at least 24 hours for everything to return to normal. In the meantime, residents should stay indoors so as not to be contaminated by the cloud of smoke, since no one knows what kind of chemicals that truck was carrying. With only a few kilometers to go to the restaurant, 
Ray realizes that he is being followed by a yellow truck and hits the gas to try to get rid of it. However, the vehicle manages to catch up with them and attacks the back of the car. When the window is violently smashed, the tourists begin to panic and Ray continues to accelerate in an attempt to escape. When they finally realize the presence of the ghost truck, June and Brad decide to leave the inn. Since he couldn't get to his truck to get the rifle, Bob returns to the diner and George tries to call the sheriff, but the phone signal has been interrupted. When June and Brad leave the bedroom and walk towards their car, the ghost truck decides to go after them and the couple has to hide in the garage. While following the news, George, Logan and the diner's customers discover that the roads to Lunar are closed due to a large chemical spill that has caused skidding when it comes into contact with the tires. In the town of Brighton, while a letter carrier is delivering mail to the owner of a toy store, a toy truck comes to life and builds a ramp to escape from the store. When he hears the sound of breaking glass, the letter carrier is startled and decides to investigate what is going on. He is then hit by the toy truck and realizes that there are children inside the store controlling the vehicle with a remote control. After being knocked down, the man ends up becoming the first target of the truck, which attacks him several times, pushing his victim's head against the curb. Meanwhile, Pete and Bob's trucks also come to life and start moving on their own. Seeing the vehicles driving away, the truck drivers try to stop them, but are unable to reach any of them. Just then, Thad arrives at the diner and orders everyone to run out of the car and into the establishment before the trucks run them over. When he finally manages to get to safety, Jack claims that the ghost train was sent by aliens to do justice because the human race is destroying the planet. After getting out of the car, Abby was about to be run over when Logan showed up to save her and help the girl get to the garage, where June and Brad are hiding, unharmed. While looking for a way out of there, Brad tries to start the truck that is parked inside without the keys. After a few hours trying to establish a link between the aliens and the ghost trucks, Jack manages to formulate a theory. According to him, two weeks ago, a rain of comets bombarded the atmosphere and, when this happened, alien particles reached Earth. Therefore, he believes that somehow these particles are interfering with electricity and radio waves. Based on this theory, Jack claims that those trucks are operating on an accidental energy wave that seems to have an intelligence of its own. Upon hearing this, Bob and Pete decide to ignore it, as they are convinced that everything that is happening is part of some evil government experiment. However, Thad claims that the government has nothing to do with it and reveals that he was part of the US Air Force. After this revelation, the truck drivers become even more suspicious, as the ghost trucks only started appearing when Thad arrived in Brighton. In an attempt to force the ex-pilot to reveal everything he knows, Bob and Pete decide to attack him, but are stopped by George. After picking up his gun, the old man orders everyone to stop fighting and Ray says that they need to act together if they want to survive the truck attack. That afternoon, two scientists are sent to the site of the explosion to investigate the type of chemical being released into the atmosphere. When he gets there, Don puts on his suit so that he can approach the site safely and not be contaminated by the smoke. Meanwhile, Rick remains in the truck and tries to contact the base to ask for reinforcements. However, as the telephone signal has been interfered with, he gets no response and, in the meantime, his suit begins to fill with air. Then, when Rick gets up to put on the protective suit, he ends up being attacked by the empty suit and is eliminated after being hit by numerous axes. Soon after, Don also becomes a victim and, after eliminating the scientists, the ghost truck makes its way to Lunar City. While Brad keeps trying to start the truck, Ray decides to take a chance and, as he leaves the establishment, he comes across one of the trucks. After almost being run over once again, the man goes into the restaurant to come up with a new plan and Thad shares his idea with him. In order for the youngsters to reach the diner unharmed, they will have to run and hide inside a large sewage pipe in the middle of the parking lot. Then Ray and Thad will try to distract the trucks so that Logan and Abby will run towards the establishment. Just then, the truck that Brad is trying to repair comes to life and decides to run him over. Hearing her husband's screams, June runs to try to help him, but can't open the door. When the door is knocked down, the woman sees Brad's body lying on the ground and uses an axe to attack the truck. Just then, Ray runs towards her and manages to get June into the cafeteria before she is run over. Meanwhile, Logan drags Brad's body back into the garage, but soon discovers that the man didn't survive. After losing her husband, June suffers a bout of hysteria and Hope tries to calm her down. At that moment, the trucks get together to establish communication and start a plan to get rid of those humans. Desperate to get out of that garage, Abby decides to start her plan to get to the cafeteria and runs into the sewage pipe. Even though he knows it's not the right time to come out of hiding yet, Logan decides to go after her and, just then, a truck full of rubble appears to try and suffocate them. Terrified of losing his son, 
Ray decides to act and attracts the attention of all the trucks at once. Seeing the ghost vehicles approaching, the man draws his gun and starts shooting, but the shots are unable to stop them. However, just as Ray was about to be run over, the trucks simply turn off their engines and he has the chance to help his son escape. When they realize that the trucks are stopped, Bob and Pete decide to leave, but George tries to stop them, knowing that this is a risky strategy. At that moment, the old man is attacked and Thad strikes Bob, but is knocked down by Pete. In an attempt to break up the fight, Jack grabs a bottle to hit the truck driver and Pete collapses. With Ray's help, Logan and Abby manage to get out of the sewer and run to the diner. Seconds later, the trio make it out unscathed, but Bob isn't as lucky and, as soon as he leaves the establishment, the vehicles start chasing him, so he has to hide in one of the rooms. Minutes later, overwhelmed by the despair caused by her husband's elimination, June decides to escape through the back door and tries to sneak past the trucks, but ends up being run over. After claiming yet another victim, the convoy meets to decide what the next stage of their plan will be and the trucks once again communicate with each other. Worried about what those vehicles are up to, Ray orders George to get a map so that the group can structure an escape route and get the hell out of there. After crossing a 12-kilometer trail to the north, they will come out at a mine located right next to a military training base. The plan then consists of Thad going there and borrowing a helicopter to return and rescue his friends. Meanwhile, Bob builds some homemade bombs to attack the trucks and manages to set one of the vehicles on fire. What the man didn't imagine was that his attack would backfire on him and he ended up being eliminated during an explosion along with Pete, who was trying to regain control of his truck. As she witnesses yet another elimination, Abby begins to lose hope of survival and deeply regrets having agreed to go on that trip with her father. When he realizes that the girl is terrified, Logan sits down next to her and tries to reassure her. The young man says he believes that everyone there will survive and guarantees that, once Thad arrives at the base, they will be safe. A few hours later, when night falls, the trucks start to act and, after destroying the pump that supplies water to the cafeteria, they run over the generator. At that moment, Logan makes a risky decision and rushes to the garage to get his bike before the trucks destroy it. Seeing the convoy running over everything around it, George soon realizes that his diner will be the next to be attacked, so the group rushes to escape. Suddenly, they hear the phone ringing outside the establishment and begin to wonder if it might be a rescue team trying to contact them. Desperate to get out of there, Abby decides to take a chance and runs to the phone booth to answer the call. When he realizes that the girl has left, Jack runs after her and manages to save her before she is run over. However, this heroic act ends up costing him his life and Abby feels guilty for having caused Jack's elimination. After eliminating him, the trucks gather to drive towards the diner and Ray orders everyone to lie down on the ground to protect themselves. However, before reaching the establishment, the vehicles break and stop in front of the fuel pumps. At this point, Ray discovers why he wasn't run over when he went to rescue Logan and Abby from the sewage pipes. The purpose of the vehicles was to keep Ray alive so that the man could fill them up. When he realizes this, the gas station attendant says he'll fill up the trucks and asks that, in the meantime, Thad run off into the valley until he finds the military base to ask for help. Concerned about her friend, Hope decides to join him and discovers that Ray is planning to fill the trucks with gasoline, as this fuel can run diesel engines. While the trucks are distracted, Thad takes Logan's motorcycle and says goodbye to his daughter with the promise that he'll be back in the morning. However, Abby refuses to stay at the diner, so the ex-pilot has no choice but to take his daughter with him on this mission. After refueling the vehicles, Hope and Ray go to find Logan, who is hiding in the bushes and uses a flashlight to signal his location. At this point, the young man informs him that George didn't want to go with him and decided to stay in the cafeteria. However, the truth is that the old man was planning to buy time for his friends to escape and started shooting at the trucks. Seeing the other members of the convoy being attacked, the ghost truck that is leading the operation revolts and, after abandoning its trunk, drives at high speed towards George. Worried about his friend, Ray runs to try to stop the truck, but he can't get there in time and the old man ends up being run over. Furious at the elimination of one of his best friends, the man decides to take revenge and, after grabbing his rifle, he shoots at the vehicle, causing a huge explosion. After their leader is destroyed, the rest of the convoy decides to band together to eliminate the surviving humans, so Ray has to flee to the hills with Logan and Hope. The plan now is to spend the night in the mountains, as they know the trucks can't reach them while they're there. A few hours later, one of the electricians responsible for repairing the power station that supplies the city realizes that something is wrong with his truck. While hanging by the safety equipment, the man realizes that the vehicle has started to sway and ends up being pushed towards the pole. At this point, a short circuit is caused and the electrician is electrocuted till elimination. That night, 
While waiting for Thad to return with the army to save them, Ray and Hope wonder if this is just the beginning of the vehicle rebellion, because if that's the case, there will be no safe place left on the planet. Seeing the woman with her mind tormented by insecurity about the future, Ray hugs her and promises that, whatever happens, they will be fine. A few hours later, as dawn was breaking, the trio spotted a helicopter approaching from the hills and began shouting to attract its attention. Just then, they realize that Thad has kept his promise to return to rescue them and are relieved to see him. When it hears the noise of the aircraft, one of the trucks is drawn to the scene and tries to run over the survivors, but the trio manages to get into the helicopter and escape. Just then, Logan comes across Abby and hugs her, but realizes that the young woman is in a state of shock. Happy to have escaped alive, Ray thanks Thad for coming back to rescue them, but just then he realizes that there is no one flying that aircraft. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.